I've even running out of fuel lately. Is it annoying when you forget to bring extra fuel when you travel somewhere far? How many times did you have to bring your vehicle back on a lift? The answer is way too many. Hello everyone, my name is Austria and I've been building piston engines since 2016. Yes, that's about 4 years now. And today I will show you how to make a piston engine in survival so you don't have to worry about these problems anymore. In survival, you currently have a few ways to power your vehicles. One is the very first scrap engine that you can build in a crash landed ship and the outpost. It's cheap and can be useful in the early game. And it's even good for the late game since it's good for powering your steel blades and drills. Of course, at that point, you can probably afford the better gas engine. It's relatively inexpensive and can be upgraded once you have enough component kits. It can also make your vehicle pretty fast which is important to avoid farm bots. But of course, both of these use fuel. The gas engine can be upgraded to where it uses less fuel, but overall, once you load your vehicle with too many things, you'll probably still use about as much fuel as before. What about the electric motor? Yes, motor, not an engine. An engine only converts chemical energy to mechanical energy, while a motor converts any type of energy to mechanical energy, which in this case is electricity. In other words, every engine is a motor, but not every motor is an engine. Confused yet? Anyways, devs, please fix this. So, the electric motor is mostly good for powering your tools and not wheels. The reason for that is because vehicles powered by an electric motor are bad at steering. All powered bearings rotate at the same speed with the same amount of torque, meaning that your inner and outer wheel are locked to spin at the same rate. This makes your wheels feel like one big wide wheel which makes cornering in tight spaces bad. Did I mention that they also use batteries? This makes the electric motor even more unideal than the gas engine to power a vehicle. And last but not least, but actually it is the least because it's the worst one on the list, the thruster. In fact it's so bad I haven't even crafted one yet, therefore I don't even have any footage of me using a thruster, because it's not worth it unless you want to fly. I mean look how expensive it is. You will need 120 metal to make one single thruster. Or if you don't have the drill yet, 180 scrap metal. That is the equivalent of killing 18 haypots. Plus, it also uses fuel. So this leads me to my alternative, the piston engine. It uses no fuel or batteries and for your luck, I have made a very survival friendly design which you can make after watching this video. What you're going to need is a connection to, a welding to, 18 component kits, 8 bearings, 2 sensors, 2 pistons, 1 controller, 2 switches, 2 logic gates, 2 big wheels, 6 small short pipes, 6 small bend pipes, 2 small 6 way pipes and of course building blocks of your choice. And I know what you're thinking, this list of items feels a bit expensive, but trust me, it's a great investment. Here's how to build it. Step 1. Start with placing a block on a lift with a bearing like this and put a big wheel on it. In the middle of the wheel, place 3 short pipes like this, then put a 6-way pipe like this, followed by a bearing. Connect another 6-way pipe to the other side of the bearing, followed by another 3 short pipes and a big wheel. Step 2. This time instead of putting a bearing directly to the second wheel, put 3 blocks like this and 2 sensors like this, with a bearing in the middle. Make sure you have to put them as shown, otherwise your engine won't start or work properly. These sensors here are later going to send a signal to the logic gates which will power the pistons. Step 3. Now you need the timing wheel which will trigger the sensors. It has to resemble a half a circle in order to trigger the sensors for an exact half a revolution. It should look something like this. Notice that it looks like a 3x3 three three square with 4 blocks missing. Step 4. Put another bearing and a block in the middle, connect the block with more blocks to the other side as shown and weld the two sides together. This is what I will later refer to as support because it holds the engine together. Also, make sure that there is one block gap between the inner side of the support and the wheels.
Step 5. Go back to the middle where the 6-way pipes are and connect two bent pipes to them. They should be on the side of where the support is. The two pipes should be facing away from each other. Now put two bearings on the bent pipes and put two more bent pipes on the bearings, this time facing away from the middle shaft and towards the support. Step 6. Put the pistons on top of the bent pipes and put the last two bent pipes on top of the pistons facing towards each other. Then put two bearings on each of them and connect them together with two blocks. Now weld them to the support. Step 7. Put a controller somewhere and upgrade it to level 2. Use the connect tool to connect the middle bearing to the controller and set its default position to positive 90 degrees. Connect the timing wheel bearing to the controller. Right click it to switch its direction and set it up to default position of negative 15 degrees and put the second position to positive 45 degrees. This will advance the timing of the engine. This is important so you can reach the engine's maximum efficiency. It also speeds up the engine and you can get higher top speed. The reason for that is because the sensors and the logic gates have a tick delay. The faster the engine is moving, the more you have to advance the timing to compensate for that delay. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just make sure you did it as shown and everything should be alright. Last part of the step is to put a switch somewhere in the engine and connect it to the controller. This will be your accelerator switch. You can also use a button instead if you want to have a W key alternative. Step 8. Logic time. Put two logic gates somewhere in the engine where they won't be in the way of anything moving. I personally prefer to put them like this, so the connections are easy to see. They're set by default to end. Leave them that way. Put another switch somewhere on the engine and connect it to both logic gates. This will be your turn on off switch of the engine. Connect both logic gates to an individual piston. Now comes the important part. You should not make a mistake here. Failing this will cause the engine not to work right. When the engine is on the lift, connect the top sensor to the logic gate that is connected to the piston closest to the top sensor. Now connect the other sensor to the other logic gate. Step 9. Build a chassis around the engine and connect the turn on off switch first and the accelerator switch second. Congratulations, you're done. Press 1 to start and press 2 to accelerate. Okay, I might have lied a little, there's more. Step 10. Remember that you forgot to upgrade the pistons. Technically, the upgrades are not needed, but your engine will be very slow, so upgrade them to the max. They should use the remaining component keys that you have. Also, set the travel distance of each piston to 2 blocks and the speed to max. Now you have a simple 2 piston engine that should allow you to go anywhere you want. You can save your crude oil for other things because this baby is quick enough to outrun any farm bot. If you want to go backwards, simply turn off the engine, press 2, and once the timing wheel has fully spun to its set degree, turn on the engine. This will cause it to go backwards instead of forward. If you want to change directions faster, upgrade the controller and increase its speed. You can stop the video here if you like, but there's more. I created this design originally with 4 pistons instead of 2. The reason I showed you the 2 piston design is because it's the minimum required for the fast running engine. If you want to upgrade it to 4 pistons you will require of course 2 more pistons, 4 more bearings and 6 more pipes. 
together with enough building blocks to build another support. There is no need for more logic gates or sensors. All you need to do is mirror the middle section with the pistons. Connect each of the newly added pistons to the corresponding logic gate of the opposing piston as shown. Also, don't forget to set your pistons to 2 block travel distance and max speed level like the others. If you haven't fully followed my steps and haven't upgraded the pistons, I recommend keeping the pistons at the same upgrade level. Make sure you advance the timing again. If your pistons are at the max level, don't worry, your controller should be set like this. Negative 15 degrees on the fold and 75 positive on the second position. If your engine starts to run backwards after fully accelerated, remove a few degrees of advancing to the point it doesn't do that anymore. The newly added pistons will increase torque. This will allow you to put heavier objects on your vehicle without slowing down much. Now, I know what you're thinking. This engine is hard to use, it's expensive, annoying for the most part, and also it has the same effect as the electric motor, where the vehicle doesn't turn well in tight corners because the two wheels are connected. How can this be better than the electric motor or the gas engine? After all, if you always remember to bring extra fuel or batteries, you shouldn't really need a piston engine. But like I said, it's an alternative. It's not the fastest way to travel, but it's still pretty quick. It's turning is terrible in the tight corners, but overall it's good for the most part. And let me tell you something. If you choose not to have it, there's going to be many times where you wish you had it. Which brings me to step 11. The solution to the piston engine's problems is to neutralize them. What do I mean? Build a hybrid car that is based on a piston engine, but one that can also use a gas engine with a simple modification. If you run out of gas, reverse the process by wetting these two pieces back and remove all the gas engine connections. Now you have unlimited travel range. This is where the piston engine shines. It's great on its own, but if you have a gas engine that is level 3 or above, your car will transform to the ultimate cruiser. This is it for me, enjoy your piston powered car, and remember to tell others how awesome piston engines are. Thank you all very much for watching, have a wonderful day, and of course, bye bye.